All right, today we're going to take on one of the most, I think, important elements of drawing and all, which is learning to see what's in front of you. And to do that, we're going to go after two of the most important uh, skills that you can acquire, learning to see distance and direction. And I'll give you three different ways to go after that, and I'll take you through the drawing of this chair on this piece of paper. All right, let's go. So the first thing to think about is how is that chair going to sit on the page? So the way I think about that is uh, tension to the edges. Once you become aware of the edges of the paper, you're in a whole different world than when you're just thinking about a subject on the page. So I'm thinking about the leftmost, rightmost, topmost, bottommost parts of the chair. And I'm just doing this kind of simple uh, block in where I'm sort of trying to feel to the edges, feel a kind of tension that's uh, palpable. I'm exploring that with the marks just so that it feels, uh, feels well placed on the page, that there's good tension top, bottom, left and right. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through one of the most critical parts of this process. It's essential to be able to see angles and direction. In order to do that, you're gonna use your pencil as a tool, a measuring tool. I'm going to line up my pencil with the leg of the chair, and then I'm gonna have a stiff arm when I do that and take my arm over to the pad of paper keeping the same angle that I measured the chair, and then draw on the pad of paper, holding the pencil at the angle I measured it when I lined it up with the chair. For this to work well, it's important to have your drawing pretty upright at about the same plane that you're viewing your subject. And when you rotate your pencil over, you wanna not move it or point it in or out, but to keep it very parallel to the drawing surface. To really understand these relationships well, I need to be able to compare parts to the whole. So here I'm comparing an overall width to an overall height of the chair. One pencil tall to two thirds of a pencil wide. And I can take that two to three comparison and bring that over to my drawing as well. It's critical to be able to compare things back and forth. So here I'm gonna use the pencil to compare one side of the chair to the other to see which a side of the chair has more space between the legs. I'll put the pencil on the middle of the leg and I'll slide my thumb up to the end of the outside leg and then I'll move the pencil over without moving my thumb and then I can compare those distances and then come back and do the same thing in my drawing. Another really great technique to help you see what it is that's in front of you is to use your pencil as a vertical or horizontal reference. So you hold it out in front of you and just compare how things line up with the pencil, looking all the way through from top to bottom or left to right. Probably the biggest challenge of all is to just trust what it is your eye is telling you that you're seeing. Don't overthink it, but put it down the way you see it. Believe in yourself and you've got this. I'm drawing right down through the middle of the forms to try to understand the overall sense of, of weight and the way the chair is sitting there on the patio. It's best to establish the structure for everything first. Laying in direction and angle and then you can build your forms on top of that search and uh, continue to refine going back and forth. You'll be more right than wrong as you search for the defining edges of your shapes. Drawing is an adventure. It's a, it's a process of discovery and the more you can work around your whole drawing at once the more you'll see relationships and discover things that you wouldn't have otherwise, especially if you were just focused on a single part at the time. The other great thing about this is that it helps you to unify your drawing, that all the parts belong together, and it creates a convincing, profound whole. I'm very interested in the, in the struts there between the legs of the chair and trying to understand those shapes by their negative shapes. In other words, I'm looking at the sort of triangles and rectangles between the legs, looking at their overall width and height, trying to get those accurate. And if I have the negatives accurate, then I'll have the legs as well. I've really begun in earnest the search for finding or refining the actual edges of the forms of the chair. So I'll end up using the eraser as much in this process as I am coming back in with the pencil again. It's a process of thinking about a lot of nuance and subtlety, paying attention to where the forms go in or go out. Are the forms convex? Are they concave? And thinking about the interpenetration of forms, 
how one form goes in front of or behind the other, or perhaps a spindle or a leg is drilled into the other leg. And I'm trying to convey uh, a sense of depth too by beginning to think about the value I'm using with my pencil. So the parts of the chair that are closer to me, I want to treat those with a, a sharper point, more pressure, a more defined edge, so that those darker values uh, will want to come forward. It's just the way we see value. And lighter values will recede in space. So as I get uh, further back in the chair, I'll, I'll treat the parts farthest from me with a lighter kind of value, uh, maybe smudging the line a little bit as well. You could say drawing is a series of corrections. I guess I like to think of it more like time travel. It's going from where you were to where you are now. And the marks we leave on the paper are literally traces of where we've been. They provide us roadmaps that we can use to help us navigate the world around us and to illuminate our lives. So as I'm finishing up the drawing here now, I'm gonna leave you with the words of Frederick Frank. He was an artist, the only artist invited to the Vatican II Council. And he wrote once that drawing is the process by which I constantly rediscover the world. And I hope that for you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Okay, take care.